In this video, we will be discussing the case where the LMDD method is applied for a balanced counter flow heat exchanger. So here you are having a counter flow heat exchanger which is said to be balanced. So we will see what is balanced counter flow heat exchanger. Before that, you know that m dot h and m dot c are mass flow rate of hot and cold which is expressed in kilogram per second. The CH which is small CH and small CC are the specific heat capacity of hot and cold which is in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and if you are multiplying this mass flow rate and specific heat capacity that is m dot h into ch we will be calling it as capital ch which is known as the heat capacity rate of the hot fluid the unit will be kilowatts per Kelvin or simply watts per Kelvin similarly the heat capacity rate of cold fluid capital cc will be the product of m dot c and small cc which will be heat capacity rate of cold that is simply the heat capacity rate is equal to mass flow rate into specific heat capacity. So from based on this we will be seeing what you mean by a balanced counter flow heat exchanger. If in a counter flow heat exchanger if the product of mass flow rate of hot and specific, specific heat capacity rate of hot that is the capital CH means heat capacity rate equal to heat capacity rate of cold that is the product of m dot c into small cc this such a heat exchanger will be known as balanced heat exchanger so we will be see for a balanced here we will be discussing about the counter flow heat exchanger here we will be seeing uh, the heat lost by cold fluid sorry heat lost by hot fluid is m dot h into ch into thi minus tho which is higher temperature minus initial temperature which is equal to heat gained by cold fluid which is m dot c into cc into tco minus tci if it is a balanced heat exchanger the m dot at ch will be equal to m dot c cc which is then we will be getting thi minus tho equal to tco minus tci and from this I can rewrite it as THI I will be taking this TCO to the left side which is TCO equal to this THO will be going to the other side so it is THO minus TCI if you are looking this is THI minus TCO and it is THO minus TCI if you are observing the uh, temperature distribution curve for a counter flow heat exchanger hot fluid is moving from left to right and cold fluid is moving from right to left don't look the linear profile I will be explaining here delta T1 you can see THI minus TCO and here for the delta T2 at the outlet you can see it is THO minus TCA now I can write this THI minus TCO as delta T1 equal to this THO minus TCA I can write it as delta T2 means if your uh, heat exchanger is counter flow and it is balanced balanced means this condition the heat capacity rate of hot and cold fluids are same then the delta t1 at inlet and delta t2 at the outlet will be same this is one of the observation for a balanced counter flow heat exchanger if such a case arises then what is or how you will be finding the lmtd we know that lmtd for heat exchanger any heat exchanger is delta t1 minus delta t2 divided by log delta t1 by delta t2 if you are substituting delta t1 minus delta t2 will be getting 0 divided by log 1 which is 0 0 by 0 form will be getting which cannot be evaluated so how you can find the uh, lmtd of such a balanced counter flow heat exchanger for finding the lmtd will be applying this method delta t1 minus delta t2 t2 will be taken as a variable x where this will be becoming or approximating 0 in the limit delta t1 is equal to delta t2 so delta t1 minus delta t2 will be approximating to 0 and I will be calling delta t1 as a then delta t2 is a minus x then I can have delta t2 t1 minus delta t2 is x divided by log a divided by a minus x which will be of 0 by 0 so for applying this limit I will be applying L hospitals rule then you can have the derivative will be taking derivative of x is 1 and denominator will be taking all the derivatives finally if you are applying the limit you will be getting limit extends to 0 
a minus x and I will be substituting x equal to 0 then you will be getting a a is our delta t1 that is which is also equal to delta t2 means for a balanced heat exchangers delta t1 minus sorry delta t1 will be equal to delta t2 and that itself will be the lmtd of this heat exchangers means lmtd is the logarithmic mean temperature difference means what is the mean temperature it is maintaining at all sections here delta t1 is the temperature difference it is maintaining at the inlet delta t2 which is again same as delta t1 is the temperature difference it is maintaining in the outlet and for such a heat exchanger at all the sections the temperature difference will be same which is delta t1 or same as delta t2 and at this position that means at all sections the temperature uh, difference will be same and this will be taken as the LMTD and also it is observed that for the balanced counter flow heat exchanger the temperature profile of hot and cold fluids will be parallel and this will be linear temperature profile you will be obtaining for both uh, this and this also will also be parallel for both cold and hot fluid you will be obtaining so these are the results for a balanced counter flow heat exchanger the heat capacity rates are same the delta t1 is equal to delta t2 and that itself will be the lmtd for this heat exchanger and the temperature profiles will be linear and parallel so based uh, on this we will be solving a problem for a balanced counter flow heat exchanger here we have a problem for a counter flow heat exchanger where hot fluid is superheated steam entering at a 180 degree celsius and leaves at 130 degree celsius and cold fluid is water flowing at a rate of 3 kg per second entering at 30 and 80 degrees Celsius. So based on the given details, we will be drawing the temperature profile for this counter flow heat exchangers first. So counter flow heat exchanger, hot fluid is entering at 180 degrees Celsius and leaving at 130 degrees Celsius. So this is 130 and this is 180. So the temperature profile I will be drawing and here water is it is counter flow water is entering at 30 degrees celsius and water will be leaving at 80 degrees celsius so this is 80 degrees celsius so here if you are looking the delta t1 at the inlet will be equal to 180 minus 80 which is 100 degrees celsius here it is flowing in the left to right and it is flowing from right to left because it is counter flow here delta t2 is equal to 130 minus 30 which is 100 degrees celsius means here if you are writing this is thi tho tco this is tci here thi minus tco is same as tho minus tci this one uh, i can write it as THI minus THO will be equal to TCO minus TCI. If this condition is satisfying, then we have seen that the M dot H CH will be equal to M dot C CC. We have seen from the previous section. Means this will be giving you a balanced counter flow heat exchangers so here since from the temperature distribution delta t1 equal to delta t2 thi minus tc equal to tho minus tci i can rearrange it like this thi minus tho and you have seen that the product of we have seen that the product of m dot at ch equal to m dot c cc then you will be having this expression so it is giving you a balanced counter flow heat exchangers and we have seen that the for a balanced counter flow heat exchangers lmtd for this balanced counter flow heat exchanger will be equal to delta t1 which is same as delta t2 means its delta t1 will be equal to 100 degree celsius so based on that you have to calculate the heat transfer area required so you will be finding the area required for this counter flow heat exchanger which is uh, balanced so you can equate q equal to m dot h m dot h ch into the heat lost which is th i minus tho this is same as m dot c cc into tco minus tci 
which is same as u into a into lm td so here a uh, uh, superheated stream is the hot fluid and water is the cold fluid here cpf water is given so i will be using this term and this term for finding the area mass flow rate is 3 kg per second for water cc 4187 joules per kilogram kelvin and tc and tc are known so i can calculate the area required for the counter flow heat exchanger which is equal to m dot c c c into lm td divided by u into sorry this is m dot c c c into tco minus tca divided by u into lm td if you are substituting this values 3 into cc is 4187 joules per kilogram kelvin into tco tco is 80 minus 30 which is 50 divided by u is 820 si units into lm td is 100 degrees celsius if you are substituting you will be getting the area required for a counter flow heat exchangers as 7.66 meters you will be getting this is the area required for this balanced counter flow heat exchangers in the last part it is asked what is the increase in area if fluids flow in parallel so i will be drawing the temperature distribution for the parallel flow also here hot fluid will be moving from left to right which is 180 to 130 and the cold fluid will be moving from also in the same direction that is parallel so it will be entering at 30 and leaving at leaving at uh, 80 degrees celsius so here it is changed here delta t1 will be equal to 150 and delta t2 will be equal to 130 minus 80 which is 50 so here lmtd will be different lmtd for parallel you can obtain which is delta t1 minus delta t2 divided by log delta t1 by delta t2 which you will be getting as 91.03 degree celsius you will be obtaining for this parallel flow and if you are finding the similar by using the similar expression if you are finding the area required for a parallel heat exchanger then the corresponding area required will be equal to 8.41 meter square will be the area for a parallel flow heat exchanger for this application required so for a balanced counter flow heat exchanger the area required is 7.66 meter square whenever you are using a parallel flow heat exchanger the required area will be 8.41 meter square so you can find the increase in area and you can represent in percentage so increase in uh, in area will be equal to the 8.41 minus 7.66 divided by 7.66 into 100 percentage which will be equal to around 9.85 will be the increase in percentage increase in area required this will be the final answer for this question thank you